Hi and welcome to the Awakening Series. My name is Kimberly Archuleta. We bring brilliant minds together. Today we have an amazing guest. Her name is Susan Shinsky. She is a sound therapist with tuning forks and we're very excited to have her on the show. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. So Susan, if you can give us a little bit of insight on your journey. Um, I, like many people that, have, that are doing this work, started out very young, uh, but it was when I changed my life, went back to uh, college, uh, and met a, uh, what really kick-started my journey was meeting a, um, a mentor for me. Uh, she is also a friend and that working with her for like 14 years I was uh, I was introduced to a lot of different concepts I was able to slowly at my own pace uh, learn how to expand uh, my awareness so uh, then I was introduced to the tuning forks spirit uh, very much led me to the tuning forks and actually showed me the book, uh, this book right here, on biofield tuning. Um, I was shown that book twice, rejected it once, and then when I was shown it again, I knew this was my path. And so I, I became certified, and that really opened up uh, a whole realm of possibilities for me. That's a lovely journey, and I, I'm just wondering, what makes you so interested in tuning forks? Well, it's the, uh, it's the sound. I am not only hearing the vibrations and the frequency, because every fork has its own frequency, I'm not only hearing that, but I'm feeling it too. It's like, um, it's like plugging into a light socket. Uh, it's like you make the connection through the fork. The fork is the one doing the work, and I'm the practitioner. I'm the one that's facilitating it. But all of that really comes through the fork, and I, I love that dual um, uh, way of receiving information and, and, and feeling that energy. What are different ailments that you've addressed? Well, I've worked with... Um, I've worked with allergies, uh, I've worked with broken uh, bones, um, I've worked with uh, stomach ailments. The main thing, my main focus is to work on the emotional and spiritual conditions underlying a person's physical ailments. Uh, it, we can see uh, energetically that though that's where our physical ailments uh, originate is in the uh, uh, energy field and the spiritual and emotional uh, body. And I can definitely see how that all um, comes together, um, possibly with, you know, energy being stuck and, and things like that. Mm -hmm. right? Okay. right. Very cool. Right. So as far as the, um, the biofilled tuning forks, how, can you give us some in, uh, insight on the history of that? Yeah, um, it, uh, it was developed by Eileen Day McCusick. Uh, she was a, after she had her own uh, interesting journey and uh, was at one point was a massage therapist. And then someone said, well, there's this method of healing with sound and color. So she bought a set of tuning forks and started experimenting with them uh, on her massage therapy and discovered that um, you feel energy through the fork. So if I hit uh, a charge in someone's field with the fork, the fork will not move any further until that energy is cleared. And that's where she slowly picked up information, working over a period of about 20 years. Wow. Uh, developing sounds, her, uh, her method. Sounds fantastic. Do you divert from her method? Do you do your own or stick with it pretty strictly? Well, no, I, um, I very much bring in my, uh, my own approach, my own um, learning uh, knowledge that I acquired through the 14 years or so that I've been, um, been studying energy work. And it was one thing that attracted me to the tuning forks as at the time 
that uh, we were trained, uh, the developer, Eileen, said, uh, go home and make it your own. And that's what I did. And I, so I've brought in a lot of things that maybe not other practitioners uh, do. Good for you. I love that. Um, what is the most surprising information um, that you've learned uh, throughout the 14 years um, doing what you do? Wow. Uh, you know, there's, it's, uh, it's a whole quantum uh, shift uh, to, to do this type of thing. And the most surprising, it's, um, I guess I would say things that I understood intellectually. And now, using these tuning forks, I, I, can, I bring it into my heart. So I would guess that even though I knew uh, before that uh, we, uh, that illness and situations are, uh, originate in the spiritual body or in the emotional body, seeing that at work is really powerful. How much our thoughts affect what's going on with us. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, does music, um, I mean, I'm assuming since it's sound, um, change the way we feel and the way we go about life in general? Yes, and, and you know, uh, thinking about that, if you hear a sad song, we, uh, often it will just bring us to that place as well. When we f ha hear a happy song, will uh, will be will respond to those frequencies same with the forks uh, and different of the frequencies will affect us in different ways like the 528 is the heart and it really affects us on a heart uh, level so yes definitely we are uh, taking those vibrations in uh, through the sound waves beautiful so if somebody goes in for a session, how long is that session usually? Well, uh, I usually have clients uh, set aside about two hours. Usually it's about an hour on the table. Uh, and then we do some conversation before and after. Uh, quite often if someone's been heavily traumatized, the forks are very effective at smoothing out and healing and balancing trauma. So if there's a lot of trauma, uh, that a person has experienced, it's going to take a little longer uh, because, as I said, the forks will not move until that energy is balanced. So uh, it may be, you know, oh, here's another trauma. Oh, here's another trauma. And so, but generally about an hour on the table. Perfect. And what should a, uh, a client do after the session? Um, we generally recommend that you um, have an easy day afterwards because after the session and you've cleared out all of these um, um, charges of trauma or intense emotional experience, um, it can feel very light because what we're doing is not so much combing away, which is what a lot of healers do with tuning forks, you're combing it away, we bring it in so that, and then drop it in the corresponding chakra. So nothing is lost. There's nothing, it's more like it's smoothed out. And that energy is following the fork and then it's dropped into that, um, that chakra so that it gives energy. It, uh, you've lightened up the uh, heavy energy in the field and you've added energy to the central energy system. So we recommend that you kind of float with that for a little while because it is can be very euphoric. We also recommend a salt bath will help. Any kind of energy work is facilitated if you do a salt bath afterwards. I love that. That's wonderful. As far as, um, as your journey, it's beautiful and we really appreciate you helping so many people. Um, I, I'd love to see a demonstration, but um, before that, where can we find you? Um, I have a website, S-H-I-N-R-E-Y dot com. Perfect. So if we can go ahead and start that demonstration, we're going to go ahead and work with a woman who is uh, a very wonderful woman. Her name is Julie Doray, so we'll do the uh, tuning fork session on her. 
Okay, thank you. So what I'm going to do now is demonstrate a, a short demonstration, somewhat like I do when I go to the metaphysical fairs. I have someone in a chair. Normally for a session we are laid out on a table. But, uh, and, and again, this one will be uh, short. And uh, what we do when in the biofield tuning is we do a diagnostic with a pendulum. So ordinarily I would be checking the chakras of the client and, uh, and wherever I am guided, I will um, use that chakra as the, uh, as the focus. Uh, each chakra has a different meaning as we know. Uh, but in myofield tuning, it's been refined to the point where we can tell different aspects by what side of the chakra we're working on. Uh, however, for this session, we're just going to go a, uh, just to sh demonstrate for you how the w forks are working with the energy. I'm going to be working primarily uh, from the heart chakra for Julie. Um, and what I'm going to do is we have, I'm going to start out here. We're going to affirm that the edge of her energy field is about this far out. So that's about five feet. And each, uh, each ring of the uh, energy field represents a different age. It's like a timeline of our experience, our unique experience. Um, and each, and each uh, uh, emotional or uh, traumatic experience is recorded in the energy field and leaves actually energy here. The action of the fork heals and balances that. As I comb through the field, it's going to uh, heal and balance, collecting that energy on the uh, fork until it's dropped into the heart chakra. That way it's smoothed out. There's not a feeling of loss and it's actually very energizing. So I'm gonna start out here. Out at the edge of the field is the, where resides our birth experience. Uh, I can tell by the energy that comes through the fork. Quite often, usually in the birth experience, you'll have anxiety. Uh, and that would be uh, expected in this kind of situation. I can also tell if there's trauma uh, in the, uh, during the birth experience. So I'm combing through, like right here, it's very early, it feels like very early in her life. There was something going, it feels like it was going on in the house. These are just things, information that I'm getting uh, through the fork. When I, the fork drops down in that, um, in that uh, uh, chart. Now if, if it gets stuck there, and sometimes it does, uh, I might not want to keep um, doing this. So what I can do to help uh, neutralize that charge is take a crystal, activate it, and put that crystal in the charge, and that will heal and balance it. And then my fork will move through. It will move through. Now what we're the experiences that are residing there in the, at the heart chakra level is going to be related to things that affected her or the client uh, through the heart. So uh, that will also give us clues as to what's going on with Julie. What we're doing, I'm going very fast. Skimming through. Whoa, really heavy right here. Uh, it's very interesting how you can feel the different, uh, how the energy shifts. And then it's dropped into the heart. Now, if you, as you become more um, uh, aware of subtle energy, a lot of people can feel when that uh, is going into the heart. I've had people, when I start combing like this, burst into tears um, because it, um, when the fork enters that charge, it often brings up memories and feelings from that time for the client. 
people that have been heavily traumatized. Um, I have found uh, that it is probably the most um, comfortable way of healing trauma. I'm a therapist, uh, a counselor and therapist with a specialty in trauma and um, sexual assault. And I have um, I, I found that this uh, heals the trauma and um, in a very uh, much more comfortable way. It's as if you can see the bigger picture and not get so pulled in by the emotions. So I'm going to keep dropping that energy that we've collected on the fork uh, into her heart chakra. And then what I do is point the fork at the chakra when I feel like it's all been deposited into the chakra. I'll uh, point the vibrating fork in there and that helps integrate into the uh, energy system. And you can, you can tell when you're finished uh, doing that because the tone of the fork will come out clear. Another interesting thing about this work is the uh, tone of the fork changes as you go through the field and hit these different charges. Uh, sometimes they'll get really loud and screechy, other times it gets very quiet. And then what I'll do, the tone was very clear, so I'm going to call them out. And that just smooths out the chakra, it smooths out the energy, makes it flow better. Uh, and really that's about it. Now usually it takes about an hour because I'm going much more slowly. I'll check with the pendulum to make sure that uh, everything's clear. And uh, there's other things quite often I'll do uh, to facilitate uh, the session, the uh, healing for the client. Susan, if you can give us some insight on your most favorite, or I should say interesting session. Yeah, it was very interesting. I was working, um, I can work distance, meaning that I don't have to have your physical body here. Uh, and, and there's a whole explanation for that. And there is a uh, blog on my uh, website actually about that. But uh, suffice it to say, I had a friend on, the, um, on this uh, healing table and I was working with her on the phone as I was combing through her field. I've worked with her several times, so I knew that her uh, relationship with mom, her mother, was very problematic. So uh, and suddenly, as I'm working on her field, her mother, who has been passed at that time for about two or three years, she had passed over, her mother suddenly, um, I could feel her energy uh, on the right side of me as I was working and she said the mother said I want you to do that for me and uh, knowing what I knew about mom I uh, I asked her in my mind I didn't verbally ask her I, I asked her so who's gonna pay for it and she said uh, my daughter uh, my friend uh, on the table she'll pay for it so uh, as I have my friend on the phone and my friend is very quiet and very gentle so I said, you know, your mother just came in the session and she wants uh, to have a session. When I asked her uh, who would pay for it, she said you would pay for it. My friend yells. I mean, I had to hold the phone out. I will not. <laughs> and mom, though, uh, so we went on with the session. I said, no, you know, we're not going to do that. Uh, uh, we went on with the session and it was probably two hours later I couldn't figure out why I wasn't getting my energy up and my husband is very intuitive and he said she's down the stairs where the healing room was the mother is downstairs on the healing table waiting for her session and I marched down there and started yelling at her you can't you can't force a session uh, this work is um, we, we go into the session, we want to help others. However, there has to be a certain amount of agreement on the 
part of the client so that we're not just, this isn't a, free, a freebie, a free lunch, and that's what she wanted. Uh, because what the forks do is uh, it clears cellular memory, so you don't take that trauma that you have stuck in your field, you don't take it into the next lifetime. And that's what the mother wanted to do. She was not accountable for her life, and she wanted it cleared with the forks. And that's no, no. So, and she was even, uh, had such a poor sense of boundaries that she was willing to stay on my healing table until she got her session. No, no, we don't do that. How did you rid her from your... I just, uh, uh, I'm embarrassed to say that I yelled at her. I said, yeah, because it made me angry that I, I felt used. So yeah, she, with that, uh, she had enough light she just couldn't connect to the light very well, but she had enough light to say, okay, I, I need to leave. And so I didn't have to do any kind of elaborate ceremony to get, get her to move on, but, but yeah. So I've, I do work on people who have passed over, and what it does, again, is they are able to enter their next lifetime without carrying that trauma with them. And you can work from afar, distance Yes, healing. yes, which is uh, convenient at times to be able to do that. Uh, you can get more information about biofield tuning on my website, but the uh, biofieldtuning.com also has a lot of information. It has videos for you to, um, to watch, to know what to expect in a session, different ways that this can be uh, utilized. Uh, there's also a list of practitioners. Uh, they, uh, there's practitioners worldwide, uh, and then also, of course, in the States. So I would encourage you, if you, um, uh, to add this to your repertoire, I feel like the time has come when it takes more than just one modality to accomplish our healing. And with all of the light workers, which Kimberly is helping to do by, by giving us options and knowing which one is going to resonate, which one is going to uh, uh, work uh, with me and what I have going on the best. And so, uh, so I encourage you to explore where your uh, curiosity leads you. Thank you so much, Susan. That was awesome. Thank you Thank for you. having me. Absolutely. Thank you.